framework. Also, accounting policies used for the corresponding figures are consistent with those of the current period or whether appropriate adjustment or disclosure have been made. Corresponding figures agree with amounts and other disclosures presented in the prior period or whether appropriate adjustment and or disclosures have been made. Incoming auditor, additional requirement. It is also very important for the external auditor to look at prior period financial statement audited by another auditor. That is, you have been engaged currently, but the previous year financial statement was audited by another auditor. It is very important for the current auditor to pay attention to that previous audited financial statement. So the, pre the predecessor auditor may reissue the auditor's report on a prior period with the incoming auditor only reporting on a current period. The incoming auditor's report should state that the prior period was audited by another auditor, very important, and the incoming auditor's report should indicate that one, that the financial statement of the prior period were audited by another auditor, the type of the report issued by the predecessor auditor, and if the report was modified, the reasons therefore, and the date of that report. Prior period financial statement not audited needs to also to be stated. That is, if the financial statement, the prior period year was not audited, the auditor, the current auditor, the incoming auditor needs to state that the prior financial statement was not audited, but that will not still exonerate the incoming auditor to do a good job. When the prior period financial statement are not audited, the incoming auditor should state in the auditor's report that the comparative financial statements are unaudited. Such a statement does not, however, relieve the auditor of the requirement to carry out appropriate audit procedure regarding opening balances of current period. Now let's stay, turn our attention to subsequent events, things that happen after auditing. So we have subsequent event, events that occur between the date of financial statement that is referred to us as the balance sheet date and the date when financial statements are authorized for use. There are two main types or events, those that provide evidence of condition that existed at the date of the financial statement and those that are indicative of condition that arose after the date of the financial statement. So to be able to understand these two events properly, we're going to group the reporting dates of financial statement. One, date of the financial statement. Two, date of approval of the financial statement. Three, date of auditor's report. And fourth, the dates of the financial statement are issued. So we have the date of financial statement, the date of approval of the financial statement, date of auditor's report, and date the financial statement are issued. So let's turn attention to certain procedures and occurrences up to the date of what? The auditor's report. The auditor must perform audit procedures designed to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence that all events up to the date of the audit report that may require adjustment or all disclosure in the financial statement have been identified. Audit procedures were first discovered after the date of the auditor's report, but before the date of the financial statement are issued. So these are things that have occurred after the auditor's report, but the financial statement have not been issued. In this case, the auditor has certain rules to play, saying that the auditor does not have any responsibility to perform audit procedures or make any inquiry regarding the financial statement after the date of the auditor's report. During the period from the date the auditor's report to the date of financial statement are issued, the responsibility to inform the auditor of facts which may affect the financial statement rests with the management. When after the date of auditor report, but before the date of financial statement are issued, the auditor becomes aware of a fact which may materially affect the financial statement, the auditor should consider whether the financial statement needs amendment, should discuss the matter with management, and should take the action appropriate in the circumstance. Now let's look at facts discovered after financial statement had been issued, the audit procedure in relation to that. After the financial statement has been issued, the auditor has no obligation to make any inquiry regarding such financial statement. 
when after the financial statement has been issued, the auditor becomes aware of a fact which existed at the date of the auditor's report and which, if known at that date, may have caused the auditor to modify the auditor's report. The auditor should consider whether the financial statement needs revision, should discuss the matter with management, and should take the action appropriate in the circumstance. Let's look now at reporting control weaknesses. During the evaluation and review stage of the audit, the auditor must draw attention of management and those charged with governance to the weaknesses discovered on the systems of control. The weaknesses are those weaknesses which during the evidence gathering, management and those responsible could not provide satisfactory answers. Management attention is drawn to these weaknesses through a letter of weakness which the auditor must issue to them. This is an example of letter of weakness. May take note and read more to appreciate it. Now, going concern. It is very important assumption in accounting, the going concern assumption, that every entity or that the entity in question will exist into the foreseeable future. It is the responsibility of management to make that this assertion that going concern assumption involves making a judgment at a particular point in time about the future outcome of events or condition which are inherently uncertain. It is therefore also the responsibility of auditors to consider the appropriateness of management use of the going concern assumption in the preparation of financial statement and consider whether there are material uncertainties about the entity's ability to continue as a going concern that need to be disclosed in the financial statement. So the auditor's responsibility for going concern. One, we're saying that it is a responsibility of the auditor to evaluate management assessment of the entity's ability to continue as a going concern. Two, the auditor is responsible to consider whether they are and remain alert throughout the audit for evidence or conditions that may cast significant doubt on the entity's ability to continue as a going concern. Third, the auditor should inquire of management its knowledge of events or conditions beyond the period of assessment that may cast significant doubt on the entity's ability to continue as a going concern. And fourth, but not the least, obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence to determine whether a material uncertainty exists. If evidence or conditions are identified that may cast significant doubt on the entity's ability to continue as a going concern. So these are the four main responsibilities of the auditor when it comes to going concern. Now let's look at certain conditions on going concern and the type of report the auditor should issue. So condition one, going concern assumption is appropriate but a material uncertainty exists. We are saying that the auditor should issue unqualified opinion but modify the auditor's report by adding an emphasis on matter paragraph that highlights the existence of the material uncertainty. Second condition, going concern assumption appropriate but not adequately disclo disclosed. Here, the auditor should issue a modified opinion on the grounds that there is insufficient disclosure and the financial statements are materially misstated. Depending on the specific circumstance, this may be a qualified, a set for, or an adverse opinion. Third condition on going concern. Going concern assumption inappropriate. Here, straightforward, an adverse opinion should be issued if the financial statements have been prepared on a going concern basis. But if the financial statements have not been prepared on a going concern basis, then an unqualified opinion by modified the auditor's report by adding an emphasis of matter paragraph. The fourth condition on going concern, where no sufficient and appropriate audit evidence on going concern assumption have been gathered. If the auditors are unable to form an appropriate opinion because they were not able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence, they shall issue or they should issue an asset for qualified opinion or a disclaimer. 
The last condition, which is management unwilling to make or extend its assessment on going concern. Here, the auditor should modify the audit, audit report as a result of the limitation on scope of the auditor's work. Now, let's look at other information contained in audited financial statement. Remember, financial statement do not only contain the figures, the amount. It has additional information that adds up to, and also other information that makes the whole annual report. You'll be saying that the auditor should read the other information to identify material inconsistencies with the audited financial statement. A material inconsistency may raise doubt about the audit conclu con conclusions drawn from audit evidence previously obtained and possibly about the basis of the auditor's opinion on the financial statement. Access to the other information. In order that an auditor can consider other information, including the annual report, timely access to such information is very much important. The auditor therefore needs to make appropriate arrangement with the entity to obtain such information prior to the date of the auditor's report. In certain circumstances, all other information may not be available prior to such date. So the auditor should work hard to make sure such information is available for a quality work. Consideration of other information. The objective and scope of an audit or financial statement are formulated on the premise that the auditor's responsibility is restricted to information identifying the financial statement. However, accordingly, the, the, the auditor has no specific responsibility to determine that other information is properly stated. Availability of other information after the date of auditor's report. When all other information is not available to the auditor prior to the date of auditor's report, the auditor, sorry, the auditor will read other information at the earliest possible opportunity there after to identify material inconsist inconsistencies. If on reading other information, the auditor identifies a material inconsistency or becomes aware of an apparent material misstatement of fact, the auditor will determine whether the auditor financial statements or the other information need revision or not. When revision of the other information is necessary, but management refuses to make the revision, the auditor should consider taking further appropriate action. The actions taken could include such steps as notifying those charged with governance in writing of the auditor's concern regarding the other information and obtaining legal advice. Material inconsistency, if on reading the other information, the auditor identifies a material inconsistency, the auditor should determine whether the audited financial statement or the other information needs to be amended or not. This brings us to the end of session nine. Thank you and have a good day.